In this video, I'll demonstrate how to calculate investment portfolio volatility. And I've included the math behind this for a two security portfolio for reference. If you've taken an introductory investments course, the simplification of this equation at the bottom here should look familiar if we just rearrange the terms a little bit. And there's a good reason why when this is taught, the only example you see is for a two security portfolio. It's really the only one that's easily calculated on a handheld calculator. And this is mostly due to the covariance terms that you need to add as the portfolio expands. Once you get beyond three securities, the problem becomes too big for handheld calculation. And so we use matrix multiplication shown at the top of the equation to calculate volatility. We're going to be using NumPy and Python, plus a few supporting libraries to calculate the volatility for a seven security portfolio. And Fortunately, NumPy does most of the heavy lifting for us. So I'm going to start by setting up my environment and import the libraries or modules that I'm going to be using. Okay, so I'll run the import. And uh, if you have Anaconda installed, you should have all of these modules already installed. And the only one that you might be missing is requests, which we're going to use to go and download real-time data. And if you need to install it, uh, you can just run this command inside the notebook. Okay, so once we get our libraries, I'm just going to set up a few variables that we're going to be using. All right, and there are lots of APIs out there that you can use to get real-time data. I'm going to be using this end-of-day historical data. It's a freemium service. It does require you to register, all right, and then you get 20 free API calls a day. All right, so since I'm going to be doing a seven security portfolio, once I get the data or once you get the data, you want to just be careful not to run that cell too many times or else you're going to bump into the limit of the free daily downloads. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is read in my API key. All right, and I've stored that in an external file. Okay, we're going to set the starting date and go back about a year. I'll set up my portfolio. And then we'll set our weights. And I'll just equally weight everything here. Okay, and since these are whole numbers, then I'll just divide by 100 to get percents. Okay, and then I will just make an empty list to store the data as I download it. All right, so for each one of these symbols, I'm going to have to make a separate API call. And to do that, I'm going to just use a for loop. Okay, and then to, to actually get the data, I need to get the endpoint that I'm going to be using from historical prices. All right, so I'll go out to their website. Okay, and uh, you can see there's lots of data available here. Most of it is available for stock exchanges all around the world. All right, I'm just going to get US data and I'm going to use this end of day point. Okay, so I'll just scroll down, find the endpoint here, and I will copy it. And then we'll paste it into our code and I'll make a couple changes. Okay, so I'll replace this McDonald's symbol with each one of the symbols in our for loop. Okay, I'll replace this token with mine. All right, and then I will set a from date, and that's going to equal the start that I calculated above. And then I'm going to get the format, which is going to be JSON. Okay, so the default is going to be CSV. All right, it's just going to be easier to work with JSON. Okay, so kind of a long line of code there, but really the only thing that changes every time we iterate through our loop is the symbol. I'm going to make the call, so I'll use requests and get that request string. All right, I'm going to get it back as text. All right, I find it a little bit easier to use the JSON module and convert the string into JSON. Okay, so we'll recast our raw data as a data frame. And then I'll use JSON load string and pass each call into that. Okay, so before I 
make any changes to this, why don't we just take a quick look at what you get from at least the last call that we make. Okay, so you can see we did go back about a year as of the date this video was recorded. And you can see that you get pretty much whatever you get from any API in terms of daily prices, right? So an open, high, low, close, and adjusted, and a volume, all right? Maybe it's in a slightly different order, all right? But that's what we're working with for each iteration through this loop, all right? And what I'm going to do is add each iteration to that data list that I defined up above. And we're just going to append the raw. All right, and I just need the closing column. All right, so now we have, once we're finished with this for loop, we have a list called data, and it's got seven series of pandas data in it. And we're not quite ready to work with it yet. I'm gonna make a couple changes. All right, so I'm gonna take the list and convert it into a data frame. All right, and I need to turn it on its side. So I'll transpose it. All right, I'm going to rename the columns in there from close. All right, so instead of having seven closes, we want the symbol names. Okay, and then I'm gonna change the index from that integer index to the dates. And I can just use the last iteration through raw to get that. Okay, and then we'll just take a look at what we end up with. Okay, so there's our data frame of closing prices for each of the seven securities. All right, to get the volatility, we're going to need to calculate instantaneous rates of return. Okay, so I'll do that next. I'll make a new data frame. I'll use NumPy log of the data. All right, and then the diff. And then we'll take a quick look at that. Okay, so there we have the instantaneous rates of return for all seven securities. I'm going to get rid of that first row just to avoid any problems we might have. Pandas handles a lot of numbers, all right, but NumPy doesn't handle them very well, so I'm just going to drop them. Just spell it right. Okay, so there it is. All right, and so from here, right, we can calculate the variance for each one of the securities if we want. Okay, so there it is. And since this is a daily variance, I'm going to need to multiply it by however many observations we have here. All right, so I'll get the len of the data first. All right, so 251 observations. All right, so then the variance over that one year period, we're going to adjust upward for the number of days. Okay, and then if we want the volatility for each one of the securities, we'll just calculate the standard deviation and we'll use NumPy square root of the variance. Okay, so we can see that, yep, they go from about 15% all the way up to 60%. And if all these securities moved independently of one another, uh, we could calculate the portfolio volatility as the weighted average of each one, all right? Since they're equally weighted, all I really need here is the mean, all right? And I'll just reformat that as a percentage. All right, so this is not what really happens, all right? I just want to show you the difference between that diversification benefit we get and what it would be if it was just calculated as a straight weighted standard deviation. All right, so now we're ready to calculate our portfolio volatility. And the first thing I'm going to need is a covariance matrix. And so I'll just take the returns and I'll get the covariance there. All right, once again, I have to adjust the daily to an annual covariance. So I'll multiply by the number of observations we have. All right, and then we'll just take a quick look at the matrix. Okay, so there it is. And uh, actually on the diagonal here, what we have is the variance of each one of the securities. All right, so we do need that to calculate the volatility. Okay, and so with all that done, I'll just go ahead and calculate it. And uh, I'm going to print it off as an F string. Okay, and I'm going to get the NumPy square root of... All right, and here's where that matrix multiplication comes in. And uh, what we're going to use here is the numpy dot function. And we're going to take our weights 
and we're going to transpose them. All right, and this is actually what we're going to do secondarily. All right, first we're going to multiply the weights by the covariance. Okay, and then I'll just format it as a percent. Okay, so there is our portfolio volatility or standard deviation, all right, with all the benefits of diversification calculated in. All right, so hopefully that helps you get started calculating portfolio volatility.